Over the last century, humans have been making huge leaps in biotechnology, from the discovery of DNA to 3D printable organs. One huge advancement has been the ability to artificially modify DNA to produce a desired offspring. This technology has been used more and more frequently in the food industry to produce better foods, but most consumers don't really know if that's a good thing or not. Today, I'm going to take a brief look into GMO foods and see if they're what people really think they are. While modern gene modification techniques have only been used within the last 30 years or so, GMOs have been around for a very long time, even since the dawn of farming in the form of selective breeding. When farming, people would pick and distribute the larger, more nutritious of all the grains, leading to a natural increase in those traits among grains. That's just one form of early GMO production. People also cross-bred different species of plants together, one example being the banana. Once a very different fruit, humans cross-bred it with others in order to lower its seed count and up its overall sustainability. Nowadays, if someone handed you one of the original banana fruits, you wouldn't even recognize it. Recently, there's been a huge increase in GMO production. Scientists are carefully breeding foods and other plants together in order to grow a new food with desirable characteristics. The only thing different about it now compared to in the past is that the modifications are being made for commercial gain. When the current banana was being bred, people were trying to make an edible fruit. Now it's less about edibility and more about profits. In 1992, Calgene produced a new, genetically modified tomato plant, named the Flavor Saver. This plant was designed to last longer on store shelves by inhibiting the gene that made the tomato grow squishy, forcing it into a ripened state. Overall, the tomato was a commercial failure, not because of its genetic modification failing or consumer disinterest, but because of Calgene's lack of knowledge about tomato farming. As time goes on, more GMO products are being produced, such as insecticide-producing plants. Slowly, more and more foods are becoming genetically modified, However, not every one of the general public was in favor of GMO products. Many people, not knowing whether GMO foods were safe to consume, simply turned more towards organic foods. Others started movements against GMOs to protect humanity from their dangers. Others simply did nothing and continued eating GMO foods like normal. Let's take a look into the science of GMO foods and see who was correct in their decision. As I said before, GMOs have been around since the dawn of farming in the form of selective breeding. Selective breeding is very similar to natural selection. The best crops, usually the largest, are chosen by humans to reproduce, and the worst are left alone. Another form of GMO production is crossbreeding. Crossbreeding is a bit more complex. Two different plants are bred together to create a desirable offspring, whether that means a different colored tulip, or a seedless orange, or a banana. More modern techniques have since been developed, allowing for direct insertion of man-made or modified DNA. One such technique is the gene gun, a machine that shoots a tiny pellet coated with DNA into a group of immature plant cells. These cells are then used as a template for future plants, and sometimes the DNA correctly integrates into the plant and it becomes stable. Another method of DNA insertion is electroporation, a process that applies an electric field to cells in order to weaken their cell membrane and allow other chemicals in to change the DNA. These methods are all relatively old, and newer, more complex techniques such as CRISPR and Talon are offering more stable results. Many people believe that GMO foods could be harmful to humans, but could they actually be right? Could GMOs really be killing us from the inside? Most likely, no. Many scientific studies have shown that GMOs have no effect on the normal human body. It is worth noting, however, that a certain species of modified potato actually killed rats after consumption, but the same potatoes had no effect on humans. Another potential worry is allergens being inserted into GMO foods. If peanut genes are inserted into other foods, there's a chance these foods may trigger allergic reactions. This problem is basically already solved, however, in that foods that may cause allergic reactions must be labeled as such. GMO technologies are being used nowadays for mostly commercial purposes. Humans want better foods, companies want bigger profits. GMOs offer both of these, so it's no wonder that today's food market is filled with GMOs. Around 92% of US corn is genetically modified. But capitalism isn't all that GMO foods are good at accomplishing. A special kind of rice named golden rice was genetically engineered to produce beta-carotene, a precursor of vitamin A. Intended for consumption in areas with vitamin A deficiencies, this rice is used as a complement alongside other treatment methods. GMO technology isn't to the point of curing diseases yet, but someday we might get there. GMOs aren't exactly on the natural side of things. We've made foods that stay ripe for longer, grow extra nutrients, fight the food chain, and we've even changed an entire species of fruit forever. Nature doesn't need GMOs to function, they're all made for the benefit of humanity. All the major food suppliers essentially control the distribution of GMOs, leaving small farmers in the dust. It's hard enough for small businesses to compete with corporations without the handicap that is not having GMO crops. Many farmers may be left without a source of income, not just in the wealthy countries, but in third world countries as well. 
Another issue is the environmental side of things. GMO foods are very new, and there hasn't been enough time for long-term studies to find any data on whether they're safe for the environment. We don't know how much damage we're doing, if any at all, which is a scary thought. We could be risking GMO crops spreading and pollinating with other normal crops, and being uncontrollable, possibly even wiping out and replacing other species of crop. There are solutions to these problems. For example, market GMO seeds to a general audience, or do more research. But there's not a lot that anyone from the general public can actually do about these problems, besides complain about them on social media, which is what some people chose to do. Nowadays, digital and social media are overtaking traditional media, and with that comes uninformed people spreading their opinions. I'm not saying that everyone who believes GMOs are dangerous is wrong, but there are a lot more people who don't know the science behind it than those who do. And those who don't know end up misinforming others, leading to a growth in uninformed people. As of a poll conducted in 2015, only 37% of people believe that GMOs are safe to eat, compared to the 88% of scientists. And even then, the remaining 22% of scientists are considered hacks by the rest. This is a problem, considering GMO foods can do a lot of good, but if society keeps on pushing back harder and harder, no one will make any progress. Thank you for watching my video on the safety of GMO foods. I believe this is a very important topic that people need to know about. Unfortunately, I'm just one kid on the internet with a very small reach, and I'm not in a position to inform the masses on my opinion. This video is the best I can do, so I hope that I taught you at least something about GMOs. My personal opinion is that they're safe, and this was derived mostly from scientific research, but I tried to keep this video as unbiased as possible. Whatever your opinion is, I hope you're at least a bit more educated on the subject of GMO foods where misinformation is running rampant. Thanks for watching.